Wagwan viewers and subs, welcome back to class. This is a series of a complete restoration on this 1999 Honda. Today's video is about the bodywork part. I'll walk you through what we've done so far, so let's take a look. The first thing I went ahead and do is remove all the parts of the vehicle, including the bumpers, the fenders, and the doors, because it's a full paint job, which means we're gonna have to paint the insides. And this is how we got to this point. Uh, before we go any further, there's two questions you're gonna have for me. Where do you even begin and what materials do you need for the job? Well, in terms of where you start, that entirely depends on what you're trying to do. Now, if you're trying to do a complete restoration like I'm doing, you're gonna have to take all the parts off. If you're just spraying the outside of the vehicle, then you don't need to take everything off because that means you don't need to spray inside. Now, as far as material wise, now I will update you on the material that you need for different steps throughout this series. But for now, when you're doing the body work, obviously you're gonna need your body filler. I got this particular brand from um, Amazon. You're gonna need your hardener. You're gonna need some tape. You're gonna need a spreader, preferably a, the bigger ones if you're doing a heavy body work. You're gonna need a hammer some dolly, your sanding blocks. Um, this is glazed body filler, this is for the finish. So I will use this one first and then finish it off with this because this is a much easier sand. Now over here I have some eagle abrasive. This is 80 grit, 180 grit and 150. I have some gloves, you're gonna need that. Things do get messy. You're gonna need some guide coat, guys. Now, if you don't like the liquid guide coat, you can always use the powder guide coat. These are some 3M sandpaper. This is 180 grit, and this is 80 grit for the long blocks over here. Also, I have some 80 grit sandpaper, the disc uh, for the um, DA, and some 180. And then I have a maroon pad, which is like a uh, 400 grit sandpaper. This is a cheese grater, just in case you're going to do heavy body work. So everything right here is what you would need to go ahead and start your body work. I will leave a long list in the description of all these materials that I can find for you. Now what we're dealing with is dead clear, dead paint, and the dents and digs that we're gonna fix. The hood and the door is in pretty bad shape. So we're gonna go ahead and fix those because it's hard to find them. Now what I'm doing here guys is I'm using a long block with some 80 grit sandpaper and I am blocking the entire door down. Now as you can see, as I start to block, you see those are the gaps in between. That's the waves and the dents and digs because this door, it's already been PDR painless dead removal but it's, it's still in bad shape which means I'm gonna have to lay down some Mondo on there. Alright so once you're finished sanding right you finish blocking it out flat you start to notice inconsistent patterns right that is basically showing you where all your bodywork repair areas need to be. So if the panel is so dull and there's no clear on it for you to see clearly exactly where your dents are is either you're gonna feel for them or you can block it down and that will highlight everything for you now guys even though I know where my dents are I cannot just apply body filler right over it because there's still clear coat there so you have to send them out before you can use the body filler, otherwise it will not stick to the panel. And I'm gonna do that to all of them so I can start applying my body filler. Now guys, the only reason you're not going to see me using a hammer and a dolly trying to get dents out is because I already used the PDR guy. It's a good idea to use those guys to get most of the big dents out so that when you start working, it can save you some time, even money on material. Now, I know you guys might have a lot of questions for me and I might not cover some of this because it's a lot of content to cover. So please feel free to leave a comment and ask whatever question you may have. Your comment feedback is always welcome. 
when you're mixing up a, a lot of body filler you're going to have to is either you get a wider spreader bigger than the one i have it'll be a lot easier for you in terms of how much hardener you need that entirely depends on how much um body filler you're mixing and you, this is something you'll get over time and you can add less or add more when the temperature is different because the colder it is the longer the body filler takes to um to dry now when you mix it make sure that you're getting a uniform mix you don't want any inconsistency in this you want it to look you want it to be one color when you're done as that can leave ear pockets and then you have pinholes and all these other issues that you don't want so for now all I want to do is put body filler in these little areas first. Uh, these are not um, deep dents, which make things a lot easier. Probably one of this and then the glaze and I'm already done. Bigger spreader would be a lot more helpful but at this time, this is all I have, so I'm just gonna work with it. Now, one of the trick is, right, when applying a lot of body filler, what you wanna do is just get the body filler onto the panel, and then you can dress it up. That'll save you some time, and also you will be able to work fast where the body filler won't get dry on you too quick and then you just wasted a whole bunch of body filler let me not forget when you're put applying your body filler make sure you pack it in nice and tight that way you will avoid those ear pockets and you won't have a lot of pinholes now it's always a good idea to wipe in both directions now let's get down to business what I'm using here is guide code guide code is going to help you throughout the process of your sanding this is good for beginners or even experienced body guys or prep guys because the guide code give you a guide on that you you'll see the imperfections that need to be fixed it'll tell you that this area needs to be sanded more this area needs to be sanded more now it's not going to do all the work for you but it'll it'll point you in the right direction so it's a good um product to have in the shop with you now when you're sanding guys for the best result you're gonna need to block in different directions don't just sand in one direction and make sure you're holding your sanding block um, make make sure it's flat now when you're doing body where it requires a hard block if you have a soft black that's for wet sanding so you gotta use a hard block to do body work now I sand in different direction because once you start sanding in the same direction the sandpaper is gonna start to eat up um, all the surrounding areas around the body filler and then you're gonna start to have a lot of waves waves so the best um, technique to go about your body work is to sand in different direction crisscross opposite don't just sand in the one direction or else your body work won't be straight and you also want to make sure that you use your hand as a guide to make sure you feel for the high spots and the low spots where you need more sanding now i know people who says that they cannot feel the body work well if that's the case just find a piece of towel and then place your hand on the towel and rub it across the panel to feel it'll definitely help
once I'm done sanding down my first coat of body filler, now I'm applying the glazed body filler. Now the glazed body filler is a much thinner or lighter coat of body filler that will really help to give you a smoother and easier sand on your last application. Now what you want to make sure that you do is wipe the body filler um, a little bit further than you applied the first coat of body filler to prevent any waviness. And like I said before, make sure that you wipe the bondu in different directions, so horizontal and vertical. This way you're making sure that your bondu is being laid down properly and evenly distributed across the panel, which will actually make your life a lot easier in the end. Now what I'm doing here is I am cleaning the edge, the edges of my body filler which will help in the long run when you go about sanding. If there's a high build at the end of your um, body filler, then it's gonna mess with the surrounded areas where your body filler is, which is gonna make your life very difficult trying to get it to come out straight. I'm sure there's uh, at least a few of you guys in here who does this for a living and are really good at this, probably a lot better than I am. So please guys share your um, techniques with the rest of the class so we can all learn and get better together. Time for the second round now. Both guide code guys work the same. All you do with this one is you spray it. Just spray it as if you would normally spray some trim paint or any form of can paint. Just make sure you get coverage all over the body filler area and you're good to go. Now I will send this in the same manner that I did in the first round from all different angles to make sure that I'm getting a leveled sand. The only thing that I'm doing different is the sandpaper that I'm using. I start off by um, knocking it down like, you know, I call it breaking the ice with the, um, the 80 grit sandpaper and then I switched it to the 180 grit sandpaper because now that I'm going into getting everything ready for primer, you want those sand scratches to be as fine as you could possibly get them. But if you use a uh, 180, you should be fine with primer as long as you're using a high bill primer, preferably 2K primer. If you're using a 1K, then you might have issues with it start to swell up on you in, um, in a few months or years. Those sand scratches have a way of bringing themselves back to the surface. Oh man, that was a lot of sanding. But guys, this is going to be the example for the rest, right? This is how your body work should look nice and feathered edges. So, you know, it's not wavy. Now, if you notice that there is some a slight wave to it once you're done with the body work, what you can do is skim it, another coat of uh, body filler. Don't make it too thick, just make it thin enough where it can cover the, the little waves. Here's for right now, it feels really good. I'm happy with that. Now, here's one more test that you can run if you're not 100% sure that your body work looks good before you prime it. So this is some solvent cleaner that I'm using. You can use water. This will kind of mimic clear coat. So picture you putting the, gla the gloss back onto the car. So then you will go ahead and eyeball it, right? And you will see anything that stands out. Now, if you see right here in this area, it looks kind of funny. Right there needs a little bit more body work. But overall, everything else seems to be okay. And that'll be it for today's episode, guys. I really don't want to bore you, have you watch me send on all these panels doing body work because the same thing that I do on this panel is the same thing I'm going to do on all the other panels. I'll show you a little bit more once I start working on the car because what I'm going to do is once I take care of all the bodywork, I'm going to have the glass removed, the front end of the glass removed so that I can get in there. 
because for example if you see in this little area here we have some rust so i don't know what else is underneath the glass or underneath these molding so i want to take off all of that stuff so i can treat the rust so i can treat the rust properly where it won't resurface in a year or you know in the future in general thank you guys for watching as i mentioned before there's a lot to cover in this um series there's a lot of um filming to do so if i miss anything please feel free to leave your comment and ask any questions that you may have until next time class dismissed